tuning at home for free if you know what you're doing I don't really know what I'm doing but it's cool that you can do this free tuning wireless free wireless tuning Bluetooth <laughs> look at me I'm a tuner now hang on guys hang on oh I better not type in too many things vehicle system theft and vehicle theft deterrent Greetings mortal humans. How are y'all doing today? So this one's going to be a little bit about the Firebird, a program called Tuner Pro RT, a little bit about LS Droid, a little bit about OBD Link, but primarily more so about turning off the VATS, the security system, on the uh, 99 to 06 GM LS Gen 3 small block engine. I turned third and fourth gear into extra neutrals. So uh, yeah, pretty much fried third and fourth clutch packs in the transmission. So it's gone to be rebuilt. Uh, I haven't really talked about that much on, uh, on the tubes here, but the car has been parked for uh, about a month maybe. Cause I got the battery hooked up and the starter hooked up and I did start it without the transmission several times before and recently. Well, fuel pump makes noise and the Android unit comes on. So I've got the um, Android head unit here, it's just a cheap one. Being that it's Android, you can download pretty much any Android app from the Play Store or whatever. So I've got the OBD link and the app as well. And you can do some cool stuff with that. You can scan your codes, delete your codes. You can have your digital gauges and stuff on your Android device. That's why it's good to have an Android head unit. This is a pretty large one, or I think it's a 10 inch Android head unit. But I've been using LS Droid and you need a Bluetooth module. This is a Bluetooth module here. So you need a Bluetooth module to run that. And what that does is it reads your computer. So after I've done that, I get a bin file. I save my computer file on LS Droid. You can read it like any computer. It doesn't have to be running 99 to 06 GM. I believe that's what it does. So I think we talked about that a little bit last time. And then once I get a bin file, I, I save it. And I have uh, this Android head unit has Chrome. So basically I saved the bin file and I emailed it to myself. And that's the computer file from the from Bluetooth from the engine harness. This is a flex tablet. So it's a tablet with a keyboard, but it's a Windows, it's a Windows unit. So you um, take your bin file and you need Windows to run Tuner Pro. I think there is maybe some Android um, applications that does the same thing as this, but I'll be on Windows for this next step. Oh, look, there's a race car. Friggin' right. So I'm on Windows, Windows here on a separate device. Uh, there might be, there might be Android apps that does the same thing. So you might not need a Windows device if you could find something like that but I've been doing it with a program called Tuner Pro RT. This is free, free software. Same as LS Droid, it's free software also. It'll ask you to register within 10 seconds, but it's free to use and you don't necessarily have to register if you don't want to. So if you just wait for 10 seconds, you can continue for free. 
Um, so once you get in Tuner Pro, you need two things. You need your bin file and you need an XDF that's compatible with your bin file. When I did my first uh, VATS bypass video, that video has over 100,000 views now. Um, I just unplugged the body control module while it was running and I did that within a different vehicle. But anyway, this is um, gonna get you into the computer and you can get into the, I think it's gonna be the vehicle system. And once you get into there, you can find the VATS and you can like turn it off and then you can save your bin file and then you can email the, the new file to yourself again. And then you can open your email and load the bin file and LSDroid will allow you to read and write computers. So you can use this application to write it back to your computer again. And I've done that several times. Sorry, I'm a little bit shaky, but you can go in here and change other things aside from the the security, but I'll just talk about the VAT security because I'm not a tuner and I don't know a lot of things. So in the vehicle system, this is the XDF I'm working with. XDF for the operating system. I stayed with the same operating system, but I did uh, go change the bin file to a manual bin file, which I found online. And uh, there's different operating systems. So you wanna make sure your operating system is gonna be the same from your XDF to your bin file, I believe it is. You can change operating systems, but you need your bin file and XDF to match. To make it a little more simple, the bin file is your computer file, what's on your computer. And the XDF file is basically like the menu, the modification menu. So you need the proper modification menu to match your operating system. So I'm just gonna go into my mod menu here. I've already, you can go into file, load. You can load or import your bin file, which is your car. And you can do, do the XDF as well over here. You want them to be matching. And if they're not matching, the program will usually tell you that they don't match. So, sorry I'm a little bit shaky. I'm not doing the screen record on the computer. So I'm just holding my iPhone here with one hand. Vehicle system, theft, and vehicle theft deterrent. So if I go in here, it'll say zero equals, and there's a way to turn that on so you can read it for longer. It'll say down on the comments down the bottom there. Zero equals class two. One equals pulse widths. And two equals no VTD, no VATS. So if you type in number two, like I did over here, that means there's no VATS. I changed it to two there, so that should be no VATS. You can see it here, and you can see it down in the comments. Two equals no VTD. And then you can save here. Click save here, and then you can save your file again up here as a new bin if you save if you change your bin file always keep the original one so you can go to save as to create a new bin file give it a new name just in case it doesn't work just in case there's any mess ups you still have the original one you can always go back to square one ls droid and it's going to tell me i'm using 2.2b which is the newest one It'll tell you LS read enabled, LS write enabled. These are the things you can do with uh, this version of LS Droid. I'm using OBD link, which is you need the Bluetooth module there to plug in your OBD2, but it's pretty simple. Aside from that, they have a Facebook group and uh, important changes any simple this is just your simple introduction menu here what i do is i click up here and i either read a computer or i'll write a computer you can do segment swaps if you want to change your transmission to automatic or manual and um yeah so you can read your computer even if it's not running you can read it 
then you can go into your tuner pro turn off the security and then you can go in here and write it back to the computer again and you'll have no security it should fire up and uh, you want to tell it which tool you're using oops not that one and then you go ahead and if, if everything's okay it'll read you might have to click on it again and tell it what you're doing or which computer you're using i agree continue it'll tell you if your if your key is on and sometimes you have to click on the bluetooth here and turn on the first it's going to ask me the computer type so i'm going to find the computer type i'm going to use the ls computer this little menu here is tricky to see down in the corner but it slides up and down for different computer types diesel v6 ls so i'm just going to click on ls and it'll it'll read after we get it all set up here gotta turn the bluetooth on make sure the bluetooth is good click once and wait and if everything's good it'll all pop up here it'll tell you your operating system even if you haven't uh, read or write even if you haven't done any read or write yet it'll tell you your operating system at the top and uh, device setup complete So you click on the top left corner and you tell it which either you want to calibrate your operating system or you want to change your operating system to a whole new. So most of the time I do calibration because I've been sticking with the 156, um, the 156 operating system. So most of the time I calibrate and it'll ask you, uh, I've got all these bin files, I've changed it changed the bin files I don't know how many times and I started out with the uh, bird box stock 5.3 and then I changed the vats and then I tried changing some other things and then I tried changing some other things and then I changed the injectors so you basically you just click on which bin file you want and uh, you write it to the computer it might take a few minutes it might tell you to keep uh, keep everything unplugged or keep your it lights off or whatever technically some of the guys say you shouldn't do it in the car you should do it in a bench harness but my engine harness is a standalone so it's a really simple harness and i've had good luck doing it this way at first i did unplug the, your computer has two plugs you only need one so at first i unplugged everything i unplugged the alternator the one plug the drls the, i just unplugged a bunch of stuff took out the fuel pump relay because it's supposed to be done on a bench harness. But on Ellis Droid, it says, turn off your daytime running lights, turn off your radio, blah, blah, blah. So that's what I did. And it's, I have no problem doing it in the car, reading and writing. So another thing I did was I changed to the flex injectors. And inside of the, I think it's the fuel system, you can change the uh, flow rate of the injectors, which tells the computer how long to keep them open so it gets the right amount of fuel for your certain engine size. You can change like, you can change a lot of things in here. I'm not a tuner, but there's a lot of stuff in here you can mess with. Inside of the fuel system and engine calibration, there's, there's miles and there's just tons and tons of things you can change in here. Now, I'm not a tuner, but I did manage to turn off the vats and I changed the flow rate of, to the flex injectors. When I changed the flex injectors, uh, there's no way for the computer to know that uh, with my previous just security bypass or whatever. So this is good to get in here and change some things for free, save it and write it back to the computer for free on a budget. This is the engine calibration, and there's a bunch of stuff in here from the parameters to the barometric, to the spark, to the idle, to the deceleration fuel cutoff DFCO. Um, some people like the pops and bangs, and you can do that within DFCO, but I believe torque management, fueling, airflow, injectors, closed loop, rev limiters, shift light, engine protection, fuel economy, display emissions. So there's a bunch of stuff in there. 
I figure most of the stuff that most people will be doing will be in the engine calibration and the vehicle system, where that's where the VATS is. So just the simple stuff is going to be in the vehicle system and engine calibration. So it took me a few minutes to figure out the XDFs and um, the first time I tried to turn off the VATS, the car wouldn't even start. I did something wrong. I can't remember what it was, but I did something wrong. And then I was a little bit worried because I heard about you can brick your PCM. Some people have messed up um, trying to write their own computer. And if you, it's not very likely because I have no clue what I'm doing. I messed up once and this new version of 2.2B of LS Droid, it's pretty much impossible. As it, well, I shouldn't say it's impossible, but it'll stop you. It'll tell you if you're doing something wrong or if your um, checksums are invalid or whatever, if stuff doesn't match up right. So I did write it once and the car wouldn't run at all, but I messed something up. Either this was the VATS or the something that I went in and changed. So don't change too many things. Maybe just change one thing at a time change your vats and just see if it'll run and then just you know just do one thing and if you mess something up you've only done one thing so you know what you know what's not working or if you change two or three things and then it doesn't work you don't know which one you change two or three things so which one's not working why but if you only change one thing save it see if it'll run then you know if that one thing works or not i can get in here and i can see um my fuel trims, I can see my O2 sensors, I can see uh, a lot of data either between OBD Link or Torque Pro. I use one, um, the, OBD, the OBD Link app is good. I use another one, it's called Real Dash, and that gives you a lot of data. Real Dash has some um, capabilities for data logging. So you can make a data log after you've made changes or before you've made changes and see what's going on. So that's just the basics of turning off the um, security and a little bit of tuning at home for free. If you know what you're doing, I don't really know what I'm doing, but it's cool that you can do this. Free tuning, wireless, free wireless tuning. Bluetooth. <laughs> Look at me, I'm a tuner now. Hang on guys, hang on. Oh, I better not type in too many things. There's no transmission in the car, but I put the starter back on. The good thing about the Chevy is the starter and the flywheel bolts with the engine, so you don't necessarily need the transmission to like run it on the stand or whatever. So, um, yeah, I wonder if it should fire her up. So the original, the first VATS bypass I did was just by unplugging the body control module on an old truck or something and uh, using basically throwing your computer in an old truck and then unplugging the body control module. But uh, I've upgraded from that now, I've graduated now. So the problem with that was I used it for about, I don't know, 9 months or 12 months, almost a year I had it running that way was just a junkyard bypass that anybody could do pretty much so the only issue i had with that was if i tried to delete the engine codes i would basically delete the security bypass 
So now that I have gone into the computer and programmed it or wrote it back to the computer and turned it off within the computer properly, um, now I can delete the codes. I can even turn codes off so they never come on if I want. But I can delete the codes with a normal scanner and the car will still run. <laughs> so that's good. And it feels more legit, like going into the tune and turning it off. That feels much more legit. And uh, once you have it all figured out and set up, it's probably faster that way too. This is more proper way to do it, I suppose. Not like proper is anything I ever do, but anyway, it feels a little more legit. You can see daylight down through there. No transmission. I don't know if I can get my camera in there or not, but no transmission. The dipstick's just bolted to the firewall. But the transmission's supposed to be back from the rebuilder this week, better than ever, with a shift kit and Corvette servo. So it's gonna be the same 700 R4, same thing. It did last for about a year, that junkyard 700 R4 transmission. So I'm gonna try it once more with the shift kit, see how it holds up that way. It was slipping, uh, shifting between second and third. So um, slip equals wear. So I'm hoping the shift kit and Corvette servo will help. I found a wiper motor that fits between the truck intake and the Corvette um, fuel filter regulator. <laughs> and it works too. It's, it's off a Dodge truck. That wiper motor is off a Dodge truck. True story. So I know I use the F word a lot. Free. Free! But, but the OBD Link device, the Bluetooth device that you need to communicate from your Android to your car, to your computer. It just plugs into the OBD2, like the same as any scanner tool would. Um, that device was about 89 bucks, I think. 89 bucks, something like that. Uh, I think that was American, 89 American dollars, I think it was. I actually went to the American website to buy it on Amazon because the Canadian website was like twice that. But it's worth it because just for the digital dash, just for the gauges and stuff, it's worth it. So the voltage is just below 12 volts apparently, but I've had my key on for a little while. Water temperature, intake temperature, that's all working right now. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm below 12 volts, but the car's been sitting for like a month. I just had it running and I had the radio on and stuff, so. But yeah, it's, if you have that already, then it's free. You need the Bluetooth device. And um, I use the Bluetooth device for the digital gauges. I use it for the diagnostics and uh, you can also use it for data logging. So you can do a lot of good stuff. And like I said, it's only around $89 for this. And then the apps are free. like. The OBD Link app is free, the LS Droid app is free, and the Tuner Pro is free if you don't register on Windows. But it's still for, if you already have this, because I already had digital gauges, this car only has a fuel and speedometer and some idiot lights, indication indicator lights. So this is really handy and it's only like $89. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it. Um, I knew that I could use it for the tuning and uh, the digital gauges and all that good stuff. So I think it's worth it for like, I think it was 89 US dollars, somewhere around there. But aside from that, uh, the tuning is free. You don't have to buy any credits like uh, some of the other tuning softwares and devices 
So I've learned that there are several different operating systems, which is like, um, sort of like your software number, basically, for your computer. So there's several different softwares or operating systems. But as long as you have the XDF that matches, you can, um, you can go in there and modify stuff. So what I did is I started with my factory operating system and I stayed with that. And I found, um, found XDF file first, which is like a mod menu. So I got the mod menu and then I just, um, I went in and changed the VATs and stuff. Later on, I changed to a manual transmission bin file and I found that online. So lots of people have shared their bin files and um, I found one for a 5.3 2002 Silverado with a manual shift because I have the older style automatic. So there's no electronics, no sensors or anything in my transmission and I don't want to throw codes for that. But you can change operating systems, but you have to stay with, I think it's one megabyte and 500 kilobytes. So there's two sizes of computers. So you have to stay with, with that size file. But you can change your operating system, apparently, as long as you have the XDF to go in there and modify it and stuff. You can change to a different operating system, so I'm told. Just to play it safe, I decided to stay with my 156 operating system. And that's what I'm using right now. I did change to a truck bin file. I did change because of the manual transmission or the non-electronic transmission. I did change my injector size because I got the flex fuel injectors. So I went in and changed the flow rate to 4.16 grams per second, I think it is. And then my fuel trims, I can see my fuel trims on the OBD link and they went really close to zero, which is good. So, yeah, that's just that's just pretty much all I know. It's a safer way to turn off your VATs. Um, it's a more legit way to turn off your security permanently. And um, you can still go ahead and delete the codes and stuff. And uh, other things like changing the ejector size. And There's probably so many things that I don't even know because I'm still learning this stuff. But there's probably so many things you can do in there for for free if you have the OBD link tool or if you have the Bluetooth device.